Glory to Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Orthodox Ethos YouTube channel, and thank you for visiting or being a subscriber. The interview you're about to watch took place at the inaugural conference of the Uncut Mountain Press and is a part of a larger offering of tremendous material by leading Orthodox speakers, clergymen, writers, publishers. We want to encourage you to take advantage of the entire offering over at orthodoxethos.com. Go over there and register, take part in the forum, take advantage of the blog and the reading list and the entire video library, live streaming, PDF, all of the material that's there in addition to all of the lectures from the conference. You won't regret it. This is just one part of a larger treasure of material that will edify and strengthen and inspire you. God bless. Constantine, we're so great and grateful to have you at the conference. We were very excited about having you because we love Elder Athanasium Tereneos. We're doing, of course, an online lecture series based on his, on his homilies. And I'll, I'll be honest, I just repeat what he says because I just revere him and love everything he does. Well, uh, So and thank I, you for joining us. I have been his parrot for the last 30, 35 years. Yeah, you, you know, and, yeah. uh, I'm following in your footsteps. <laughs> But thank you for joining us. Um, you took the time and, and uh, effort to come in. What did you think of the conference? Was it a good, su good success? What do you think? It was wonderful. Um, you know, I, I didn't expect uh, so many young people, young couples, you know, yeah. and just the, uh, the level of excitement. And uh, I think people are thirsty. Yes. I mean, I was really expecting to put, to put them to sleep because, you know, after lunch, everybody falls asleep. But, you know, only... Uh, one or two, um, <laughs> they have those dogs. That's a pretty good, know? 250 people, one yeah. or two is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that is good, thank God. Um, you know. The other thing is, I, as I uh, mentioned in my lecture, I was really touched because uh, on a vigil like tonight, 34 years ago, oh, wow. you know, Father Kosis and I, may God rest his soul, you know, uh, Father Nicodemus. Right. Right, you know, uh, we just had his his six uh, month memorial this week. God rest his soul. You know, Carlo uh, Paradiso, uh, a holy person, a good priest. You know, so he was we, with. He was we with went you. together. We uh -huh. went, that was our first pilgrimage in Greece. We went to um, to his island first, Mytilini, uh -huh. and then the second place was Father Athanasios. Wonderful and. Uh, we went to the vigil of St. John, you know, oh. and I sat right up front and I was staring at the elder, you know, and, uh, oh, you know, and the next day he just, he just embraced us, you know, his smile and wow. his love, oh, and, that's uh, wonderful. you know, and then we left with about 50 to 100 cassettes, you know. Wow, that's wonderful. Uh, this was what, so this has been 40 years ago? Uh, 34, 34, 34 years ago, 1988. Uh, it was the vigil of St. John uh, the, the Apostle, wow. you know, September. I mean, wow. it, it, with a new calendar. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we stayed there for about three days, and we met all the monks, and, uh, you know, was just totally uh, infatuated with everything. That was my first uh, real experience with, uh, you know, the, the orthodoxy of Greece. And, um, you know, once I began to listen to his talks, and even though my Greek was not really developed at the time, I noticed that great divide between the Orthodox teaching of uh, the East and Western Orthodoxy. And uh, mm. that's when I began to believe that uh, this, this needs to get out. This, yes. this needs to be translated. Yes. Yes. And um, you know, when I first talked to the elder, I said, elder, um, can I start with questions and answers? He says, questions and answers, that's for children. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Elder, we are children. I mean, this, yeah. and the amazing thing is that he was teaching theology yeah. to these children. Yeah. You know, Holy Communion in depth, some of the, my first talks, they were talks for children. Wow. But they were embraced so quickly here in America that, that, that gave me the impetus and the courage 
to continue. Yeah. So you would translate them and then basically give the, give it like the homily. Well, I did it for uh, my repeat? wife and because you know I I began to really speak <clears throat> about Elder Athanasios and I began to you know teach in Sunday school and uh, a lot of my close friends were like, well, that's good for you. You know Greek, we don't. So I said, okay, that's fine. I'm going to begin to translate just a few talks for you. And at the time, I got to the point where I had about 15 talks translated, very basic mm. topics. And then I met uh, Father Nicholas Pallis, who uh, was in the Church of Lancaster at the time. Mm. And I said, Father, you just published a book. Uh, you know, can we just make a cat? I don't want to be by myself. Can you be my priest so I can be under a priest? Yeah. And then we can do St. Nicodemus, St. Nicodemus together. Yeah. And he says, I was thinking the same thing, so that's from God. Oh, and understand. that's how we got started. This is uh, what year? 1989. Oh, right, I, right off the bat. I, just, right just, off the bat. Wow. I, I began to translate immediately. And I would say about a year and a half later, I, I began to get invited to do talks. Wow. So you you're know? going on 30 years of doing talks then? Uh, more than, yeah, 32 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So let's talk a little about Elder Athanasius to introduce him to more people here in the United States in the English English world. Now, you, the, the big event that we are celebrating is the five volumes of his of his homilies on Revelation, which which are uh, which are accessible. Let me give a plug for people to know. Zoe Press. Dot. What is it? Zoe Press. Uh, dot. Uh, Zoe Press. Uh, dot com, I believe. Uh, yeah. yeah I think okay. It's Zoe Press. Yeah. Or U S. Or something like that. Anyway, yeah. Zoe Press. And they go there, they get the five volumes. Why is why why did you choose why did you choose to translate those five volumes? And why what should people expect out of that? The Book of Revelation. Well, at, fir at first, as I said, I really didn't think I, I would have the stamina to do all that. So initially, when I began to, and it took me a little bit of time, um, because at the time that the year two thousand was approaching. You know, I, uh, I began to translate some of the, the most uh, misinterpreted verses of Revelation, like the 1,000 years, mm -hmm. the reign of Christ, the, you know, a lot of the sectarians, right. uh, you know, the millennialisms that I right. wanted to correct and yeah. present the Orthodox teaching. Uh, you know, the, the time of the coming of the Antichrist, a lot of people were confused about when he is going to be born. Right. There were books in Greece about the Antichrist is born. And I went and found those topics in Revelation. I studied them well, mm -hmm. and then I just translated five, six of those topics mm -hmm. to be able to address those issues right away. Mm -hmm. And I was invited to do a, a few more talks on those. And at some point uh, around 1997, when I began to listen to Revelation, I was really drawn to the theology of the seven churches, mm. the person of, and that's what I did my master thesis uh -huh. with Dr. Tselengidis, the, uh, the person of Christ in the seven churches of the book of the Revelation. And I haven't published that yet. And it's a little bit of work. Uh, I think we did uh, translate it in English. But um, when I asked the elder, I said, Yeronda, can I just translate the first 20 uh, hours of Revelation. I just want to do the uh, translations on the seven churches. And then he says, um, why don't you start from the beginning? I said, Elder, it's going to take me 10 years to translate 100, 100 hours. He says, what if it takes you 10 years? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is it took about 22 years because a lot of people were really uh, coming down on me, like uh, Constant is always talking about Revelation. Even priests, they would say, you know, we don't want to know about Revelation. That's too difficult. Even, even Abbas is from, uh, from Greece, you know. So uh, that kind of deterred me a little bit. So I began to uh, give more attention to the passions, translating things, uh, you know, about the mind, the heart, the news, purification, illumination, all the basic things, catechism, uh, the Epistle of James, the Book of Tobit, uh, what is Christianity. I did a lot of that in between, mm -hmm. and then later on I returned and I began to do Revelation slowly. And that's why that, that uh, saying grew to be, uh, you know, let's do this before the Antichrist comes. <laughs> so that's why it took me so long. 
Well, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a glorious thing uh, because this kind of, uh, first of all, the approach is not simply in, uh, we're interpreting scripture. No. Uh, I've, I read St. Andrew of Caesarea, who he also read and used, and it's a totally different book. Of course. Yeah. Of course. So this is a catechism. It is a catechism. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yes. you want to learn about the Orthodox faith, read the five volumes on, on Revelation, you're going to be catechized. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the funny thing is, that, and it's not really difficult. I mean, it's not beach reading. And, um, you know, I'll tell you, I mean, I had a couple thousand books and they were not selling. Uh, of course, Zoic Press were selling most of the books and I, I didn't want to compete. So I just sold a few from my website, you know. Uh, but after I came, I, I went to Australia. The Australians said, listen, uh, I told them, look, I have an extra thousand books. I had, I had them for the last 10, 15 years. I can just send them to you. And whenever you sell them, you, we can donate the money somewhere. So this is like the first volume of Revelation? No, no, this is, I had, I had all the volumes. You know, I would, once she would publish some, she would- Oh, you would, you would get a bunch. I would get a bunch. I would get two, three cases. So I collected about a thousand books. I see. And when I was doing lectures, I was not really interested in selling a lot of books. That was not my mm -hmm. emphasis. Uh, so, you know, I was thinking, what am I going to do with these books? Uh, after I came back from Australia and after the COVID crisis, they were gone in a year in Australia. The 1,000 books are gone. Mm. <laughs> so, so you attribute that to yeah. COVIDism? And People became serious uh, uh, about the end times. And uh, I believe uh, the same thing happened with uh, Zoe Press. I mean, uh, books were flying off the shelves. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, people are sensing that things are getting difficult. Well, interesting, fascinating. But I, I want to add that uh, that's a very small percentage of uh, the elders' work. Yes, yes. I mean, he has done 3,000 3, other talks. Uh, Revelation's only 100 homilies. He oh. has done 270 homilies on wisdom of Sirach, mm. on uh, the Acts 240 or 50 on the Acts of the Apostles. Mm. And every one of these homilies is almost like a thesis. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's, that's what's really fascinating, uh, his Greek vocabulary, which is really very high. And you think he's reading it, you know, but it's all, you know, by Amazing. memory. And it's just uh, so he's a spent, great charism. He spent basically his, all his waking hours yes. pouring over the text. And I, I believe that's what shortened his life. I mean, uh. he, um, he was up till three in the morning. He had to prepare five, six lectures a week. And exactly what I said about his mother being taught by uh, uh, these, these women catechists, he did the same thing in Larissa. He organized dozens of women, you know, they, they, were, they were basic catechists that were teaching in villages. Mm. And, uh, you know, he would organize them and they would teach people from all over the Larissa area. I mean, wow. he wiped out the Jehovah Witnesses there, wow. the uh, the Pentecostals. Wow! You know, One... I mean, for ten years, he really he was work, he was a uh, he was uh, an archmandrite and a preacher. Wow! From 1960 that he got to Larsa until 1970 when he became an abbot, he was a preacher. He would go to prisons. He would go to factories to confess. He would go all over the place, and uh, you know the uh, the sectarians and the, the heretics. You know, they would really fear his name. Nobody would, just like, uh, just like uh, Nicolas Sotiropoulos, which yeah. they were very good friends with. Uh, oh, were they? Nicolas Sotiropoulos. Oh, were they were, yes, huh? yes, That's yes, a small yes. world. Yeah. yeah. How about that? So let me ask you this. Is, would you say that he ha has a prophetic word in many ways? Like he's, he has, I mean, not in the sense of maybe telling specifics about the future scene, but he, the prophetic word is first and foremost telling speaking the truth to this generation. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it is, it is evident in every one of his talks. I, I've, if you study Daniel, his series of Daniel, he will tell the Greek people, this will happen, this will happen. We will lose islands. You know, our, bon or our bon boundaries will become smaller mm. because of this. And he would base it on scripture. You know, but many times, you know, just like I said in my talk yesterday, he talked about the third covenant and the gospel of the serpent that uh, our, uh, our Metropolitan Seraphim of Perez said about some, some archbishop. He said, you are teaching a gospel of the serpent. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
And uh, that was yeah, I saw that. that yeah, was, that was in the fifty fifth. Uh, the uh, 55th homily of Revelation. He says the Antichrist will introduce a third testament. He will change times and law. Mm. He will change the natural law. Mm. The law of nature is being changed. Uh -huh. That's exactly. Not just the law of God, but the natural law. That's exactly what we have seeing. no idea, you know, what a, a male and a female is. Wow. The natural, a child needed, uh, uh, thinking a child thinking that they are cat. I mean, this is a change of them. This is unprecedented. Unprecedented. Yes. yes. And he said that would be coming down. He said that that would be coming down. He said we're beginning to see the signs of this right now. It's mm. happening in our days. He could mm. see it. Wow. And he said repeatedly that ecumenism, because it is an evil spirit, because it is a secular spirit, it's in cahoots, it's in, in, in union with other demonic spirits and the one will feed the other. Mm. So ecumenists are going to accept, you know, all, all, all this false gospel and, uh, you know, all this innovationism. Mm -hmm. Indeed. You have no choice. I mean, if, once you're in delusion, you cannot tell right from wrong. I, I, I was especially encouraged uh, by the... the uh, the homilies he would talk in Revelation, the precision he had in presenting the, the, uh, like, a, like a tremendous doctor. Like you feel like you're with a doctor who knows inside and out the body and he can tell you exactly what the problem is and where it is. He had such precision in his analysis of the, of the sickness. And he's the one, when I read his uh, years ago, he said secularism is the spirit of Antichrist. Of course. It's not that secularism is a bad thing. We have this deal uh -huh. with it. No, we, this is the same spirit that St. John talks about in his epistles and in the book of Revelation. He says the greatest enemy of the church is ekosmikefsis, when the church becomes the world. Yeah, secularism. Yeah. Instead, of, uh, instead of the church... You know, and I, I used the word yesterday, yesterday long. I made it up, Ecclesi ecclesiasticalization of the world. Yeah. But now we are really bringing the world into the church, yeah. Yeah. and we secularize the church. So yeah. he looked at secularization as the worst enemy of Christianity. Yes, absolutely. And that, and that we, uh, we are seeing it uh, rise, and therefore it's not... I mean, it, it, when you say it's the spirit of Antichrist, you immediately understand... Uh, that we're going to have a, a uh, the church is going to be filled with the spirit of the world and it's already happening and that that church will serve the ends of, course, of Antichrist. The official, the official church, and uh, he explained this very well in, in the 11th chapter of Revelation when he says that the outer court, the outer court will yes. worship the Antichrist. Right. Those who are in the outer, who have an external Christianity, those who live, you mm. know, they don't live uh, the organic faith, mm. you know, they don't live the faith in their heart, you know, uh, when you're just an external Christian, then you're in the outer court. And, uh, you know, the outer court will be trampled by the Gentiles, by mm. the Antichrist. Mm. And he, uh, he simply teaches that uh, the official church, unfortunately, the official church will worship the Antichrist. In the end times, uh, Christianity, the remnant will be limited in different households. A house there, a house here, you know, that's how it's going to be. Mm. Yes. Mm. And we saw that during COVID. Yes, we did. Some of us, we had to, to do liturgies in our home. Without, it's a, it's you know. a, he, the Lord in His mercy is slowly, slowly getting us yes. uh, clarifying things, separating the, the, the wheat from the chaff, the, the, revealing the hearts through all of this. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Yeah. What, what can, we, can we expect other material in English by Elder Athanasius? Well, first of all, I want to thank you because, uh, you know, when I began to uh, do a little bit of research to find out more information about the early years of the elder that kind of, uh, you know, gave me 
the, uh, the excitement and the impetus to begin to uh, produce more material. I like to do a little bit more on wisdom of Sirach, mm. but when he really uh, brings out the second person, Christ the Logos, the, the hypostatic wisdom mm. in the Old Testament. Mm. He goes uh, in a 24 chapter of Wisdom of Sirach, he talks about the presence of the discarnate Logos mm. in Genesis, in Job, in uh, the Wisdom of Solomon, and he just brings it out and connects it all to show that the God of the uh, Old Testament is not a different God, is our Lord Jesus Christ before the Incarnation. The Angel of Great Counsel. The Angel of Great Counsel. Yeah, uh, the, uh, uh, the Father of the New Age of Isaiah. Mm. Yes. That's the, the Father of the Christian Age, <clears throat> is Christ. Wow. See? Yes. So that's extremely important to, to establish the identity of the, the Theanthropos. The identity, because he feels that the great temptation in the final years, people are going to lose the identity of Christ. Yes. They don't know who Christ is. This is very important. So uh, when I hear that, my mind immediately goes to ecclesiology. Because, of course, of course. Uh, I mean, we don't, we need to, don't, don't we need to explicitly say that, though? When we're talking about Christ, we mean the church. Yes. So the, I know that's implicit, but I don't, I don't know if everybody gets that. Because in the world, people have separated Christ from the church, which is, a, which is the greatest of heresies, of course. Well, right? and, and how can you speak about a church when you, in some of these dialogues, you cannot, you cannot even speak about Christ? You know, you go to <laughs> these, true. you go to these true. dialogues, and, and and Christians tell you, let's not talk about Christ is, because it will offend the Jews is, and the Muslims. Is it true? You're that, denying it, Christ at that point. At point, of course. Did, is, didn't that just happen in the? It just happened in the, the seventh Congress of one of the patriarchs. I'm not going to mention the name. He said that, uh, you know, all these monotheistic religions, you know, they somehow have, you know, the same ethos and they have respect for each other oh and they understand, uh, understand the basic needs. Of, and I said, wait a second, you know, all the world wars, you know, they, are, they were between these three religions, Palestinians against Jews, you have Iranians against Iraq, they were Muslims, monotheistic yes. supposedly, yes. and then we have Christians of Europe that, yes. uh, you know, they, they had the World yeah. War One and Two. Of course. So how is that going to unite us? Um, you know, a false Christ cannot unite us. Yes, yes. When they say peace and security, then the yes. sword will fall. Absolutely. And this is what they're promising, peace and security. And that's a sign for us that yes. the opposite is happening. Yes. But I love the theology of the Theanthropos. It's the key. It's the yes. key. And it's so, he's, he's so powerful, Father Athanasius, on this. Coming back again and again and again. And he's 100% a, he's a in agreement with St. Eustine Bovovich, Father Florovsky, and so many other St. Hilarion all Trotsky, the saints, all, all the saints. saints. All Where the saints. Palamas and, uh, you know, Palamas. Uh, you know the, the God human person of Jesus Christ. He would always That's talk the about key. that. You know, That's the key. Yes. The God human person yes. of Christ. Yes. yes. We're really grateful for your work. And we're so grateful that God gave us Elder Athanasius. I'm praying that, well, whether it happens or not in this life, it doesn't matter. He is he with the saints. You know what? what He's with the saints. What upsets me a little bit, Father, and I shouldn't be upset. I mean, I, and, and I, there were so many good topics here, you know, uh, and, and this is going to glorify. He got really no respect at all from 95% of the bishops in Greece. That's a good know? sign. That's a very good sign. <laughs> I'm sorry to you say know, it. Only maybe. It's where we're uh, at. Two, three bishops talk about him. Yeah. And most of them, you know, have been using his talks to do sermons. Oh, even, yeah. Even Athenites. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but do you know, know that there's a, I won't say the name, there's a monastery in Manathos that they have a system set up all throughout the monastery where monks can, can listen to homilies and they're listening to Elder Athanasius yes. night and day. And, and Paisios would always say, uh, he, he would tell people, listen to, Elder Athanasius and Panagopoulos. Yes, you know, those two. Yes. You know, so the fact that the fact that those who are ailing in faith don't listen to Elder Athanasius is is a, is a kind of expected, and also doesn't say anything about Elder Athanasius. And, and again, because he was very outspoken against magic arts, against the Masons, the Masons, against the Zionists. Yes. Against the Z I mean, he uh, talked about Zionism. He was fearless and. Uh, you know, he's when not you politically are, correct. Uh, you're not. Yes, yes, absolutely. He's not. He's certainly not woke. 
<laughs> what would he say about wokeness today? It, it yeah, remi <laughs> reminds me of the joke of this uh, old bishop, where I think it was a little bit senile, and he was talking about uh, St. John the Baptist, and he said, you know, um, Herodias didn't do so good, you know, uh, uh, she shouldn't be committing adultery. And uh, her daughter, you know, she danced and she got uh, her out excited. She didn't do so well either. And St. John, now, you, if you would have kept your mouth closed, you wouldn't have any problems either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, so, he, 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 um, hopefully, hopefully he was a little senile. He was senile, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. But today, uh, you know, he was... Uh, see now, and, and it was unwillful. But today, I believe we have willful senility. Yeah, yeah. You know, we just don't want to speak out. Well, do they even go there? Do yeah. they even give? The, I, I, I'm always surprised that the, the criticism comes, and you say, "Well, did they talk about the content of the homily?" No. 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 What What did they say? Oh, you're against this. You're against yeah. that. That's all it is. You're against it, against Boy Scouts, and he wasn't against. Uh, he was against what the Boy Scouts were doing. They were taking young children away from church Sunday morning. Yes, and of he course. went straight to the police station. He went straight and he fought them head on. Yeah, and they threw him out. One of the uh, police had just pushed him right out of his office. He says, "Listen, they tried to prosecute." Interesting. Him. Yeah, Interesting. they tried to prosecute him. But he was his wait a second. Did he get you know, did he get persecuted by the Freemasons in, in Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, they they got one of the one of the bishops to get him to close his mouth, and thank God he was Theologos, and he says, Listen, you know, uh, Elder Athanasios is a free person and he can but then Theologos persecuted as yes, well. Yes, he was. Okay. Yes, he was. By the church. Yes, he was. Yeah. Is it true that Elder Athanasius ceased commemoration for a time of the next bishop that came after him because he, he would not recognize his uh, placement because the Theologos was kicked out on, this on is, anti uh, It was a very sad chapter in the history of the church, uh, unfortunately. And uh, Elder Athanasius was pulled into this because uh, he had no choice. Uh, it was the time when... Uh, Papadopoulos revolution yes. took place yes, and yeah. they took 12 pious bishops yes. and they just they just displaced them and they said Doug, you're no longer a bishop that's it you know they uh, and one of them was Theologos yeah so after uh, that government fell the people of Larissa said we want our father we want you know we want Theologos because now that government is you know defunct it's so when they went to the Greek uh, courts and government, the court agreed that Theologos should go back. Uh -huh. It was the only natural cho uh, choice, and it was the, uh, you know, the right thing to do. Uh -huh. This man was uh, uh, taken out of his position, uh, you know, illegally, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. by the force of the government. He's and, he's uh, he's buried at the monastery. Yes, he is, and at that time. The hierarch, the hierarch of Athens said, no, that's not my choice. I want another bishop. Uh, and the people of Larissa did not accept the other bishop. There was, unfortunately, a lot of unrest for a number of years. Yes, there was. Yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, since several thousand people, there were his spiritual children, you know, obviously he's not, he was not going to isolate himself from them. He stayed with them. Yes. Yes. And he, yeah. uh, he, he sided with Theologos, who was the right for bishop. And uh, he was, uh, you know, the, the, this injustice went on for years. And I met Theologos and, I, and he said, listen, you know, I'm here because of the love of my flock. I'm not here because I want a position. Right. You know. Right. But, you know, I am the father of this family. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So unfortunately, uh, the evil one does, you know, play politics even within the church sometimes. Well, thank you so much for joining us and coming here. And we look forward to many more such occasions for the sake and edification of the faithful. I think they really enjoyed it. Well, it was we great. had a great lineup of speakers and great topics. And uh, we'll look forward to... Uh, uh, getting, getting the homily up on Crowdcast and helping people okay. see it. Thank you, Father Peter. Thank you. I hope Constantine. to see you in Arizona sometime. Come, soon. come soon. Come soon. <laughs>